Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alison, the online piano and the online violin tutor. So this is another violin review video where I'm gonna be reviewing three of the Fiddlerman violins that I have been sent. The three that I'm gonna be reviewing are the Holstein Traditional, Holstein Workshop and the Holstein Bench violins. So I'm gonna be doing three individual reviews of those violins as I've said in the other videos and also I'm gonna be doing a couple of comparison videos as well, comparing the traditional to the workshop and the workshop to the bench just so you can compare the, the price points and how each one kind of um, sounds in comparison to each other pretty much. All of those videos are gonna be linked directly under this one and all the other videos as well. So all the information is gonna be underneath this video. So go and check those out. So the violin we're gonna be reviewing today is this one. And this is a Holstein Bench Plowden 1735 violin. And this is priced at $4,600, which is very expensive for a violin, but this would be the violin to end all violins. There would be no other violin that you would need to buy if you bought this one. That is for sure. So out of the three that I've been sent, the traditional, the workshop and the bench, this one comes in at the at number one. So this is the, the top one. This is the big daddy of the three that I've been sent. And this does come in variations as do the other ones. So I'll put them, the names of the different variations up on the screen, but they're all essentially the same violin, but just slightly variations on each other. So uh, for example, this one is gonna sound quite, quite deep and quite rich and quite mellow, in my opinion. I'll go into sound on this more a little bit later in the video but the others might sound you know one of them might sound a bit brighter one of them might sound a bit sweeter uh, a bit richer a bit darker velvety all that kind of thing so each one has a slightly different flavoring to them but essentially it is the same violin based on the same replica model that, that they've that they've chosen all of these are available to purchase on the Fiddler Man website which I'll have a, a quick link link directly underneath this video So this doesn't come with a bow and, and neither do the others. When you start getting into professional, semi-professional or professional, I would definitely say this is a professional uh, violin just based on purely on the price point and sound and playability. But once you get into professional level violins, it is one is expected to just purchase the violin and then you would purchase a bow completely separate to that. You don't start buying these in sets. It doesn't really work like that. When you get to this kind of level, it's very much based on your technique, your style, what it is you're looking for, and all this, that, and the other. So I'm gonna be using my regular bow that I play with. This is a Pernambuco bow. I really like this bow. This this is you know perfectly weighted for me. This is quite an expensive bow. So you know I chose this separately to the violin that I currently use, my, my antique violin that I currently use and you would be expected to do the same. So what would happen is, in theory, that you would choose the violin and then you would choose the bow after that. It would be probably a, a good recommendation to choose the violin, have the violin for a couple of three months so you get used to what you like about the violin, you, um, you kind of play the violin uh, in as well. So wood does, um, does, does expand and shrink as we know, and the tones do reverberate around the violin the more we're playing. Some people say that's complete hogwash. I, I don't believe that's hogwash. I believe that is true because the, the, the wood hasn't vibrated until I'm actually playing it. So, you know, if I'm playing 40, 50, 60 hours a week, then this violin is gonna be completely different at the end of the week than it was at the start of the week. But that's beside the point. So you would play this in for a couple of months to get used to it and understand and learn the sound of the violin. And then you would separately choose a, a, a bow that you think would go with this. You would never buy a violin of this caliber and be playing on a $30 bow. <laughs> it just wouldn't be done. What would be the point in spending all that, that money, 4,600 or whatever on a violin, and then you've basically just got a, a, a cheap uh, synthetic head bow that just isn't gonna cut the mustard, isn't it? It, it barely even plays martelet bow strokes, let alone trying to do spiccato or staccato bowing. So you would choose your bow separately. So this does come playable out of the box. It was tuned before it was left because when it came from the US all the way to me in the UK, I just had to do a quick little bit of tuning on this. 
speaking of tuning, these pegs are amazing. It's like it's like moving the peg through butter. It's slipping enough so that I can move it into uh, position, but not so much that it's slipping past or slipping under where I need it to be. So the peg box is really nice. The peg box has been very well, well thought out and I don't think there's any kind of jiggery pokery that I would need to do in the peg box, i.e. putting any soap on or any peg grip or you know anything like that. So these tune beautifully, but Again, that's part of, of what you are paying for. So you will see that there are some technical specifications that are coming up on, on the screen, but if you want to know a little bit more about this, then head on over to the Fiddler Man website where there is a lot more information about the background of this violin, where it has come from, a little bit more about how it's made and, and all that kind of good stuff. And I do believe there is a video demonstration of one of um, their staff members, um, I don't know who it is that's playing it, but there is a video demonstration of someone playing this as well as, as I'm going to be playing in the video next. Time to play it I think. I'm going to be recording this in two different ways. I'm going to be playing the same pieces throughout on, on all, the, all the different violins just so it makes it an easier comparison. I'm going to be making a back to back, a video with these recorded back to back as well so that you can hear the three different violins side by side and you know you, you can hear the sound sound comparison, the price comparison, the make and model and all that kind of good stuff. I'm going to be doing studio recordings using my uh, condenser microphone into the software on my computer, plus I'm going to be doing a more ambient recording using the microphone that I'm picking up this, which is down there in front of me, so you have a little bit more from comparison of picking up the sound in the room rather than on a studio mic. And in my studio software, I'm not going to be doing any wizardry with any of the sounds, so no compression, no EQ, nothing, just the raw sound of the violin as is recorded. So thoughts and opinions then. Um, I love this violin, I, I, I like it, I, I really, really like it, and I'm not just saying that, I really do like it. You, you can definitely tell between that and the other two violins, I've got one in front of me there, and I've actually got one behind me. You can definitely tell straight away that the money is in this one. You can tell that this is gonna be you know, around the $5,000 mark. This comes in at just under $5,000, but you can definitely tell, I, I could tell when, in fact, um, Quick story, when these all arrived to me, um, there wasn't really, uh, there wasn't any label on any of, uh, no labels on any of the boxes, so I didn't know what I was gonna be opening up or which of the three violins I was gonna be opening up until I opened them up. I knew which three violins I was gonna be sent, but I just didn't know which one I was gonna be picking out of the box. But I will say, as soon as I took off the lid of the box and I saw this one, I knew straight away exactly which one this was. And you can just tell that by looking at it. It's very, very similar to my violin, my antique violin, in terms of looks. This has been hand varnished in antique Italian oil, so I think 
that's where the difference is. So the antique violins always have that kind of, um, uh, I don't know how to kind of articulate the, the look of them, but I don't want to say a dull, a dull varnished look. So it looks like the varnish is very, very thin. Um, as opposed to kind of a sprayed on lacquer kind of look. None of these have that look, but uh, it just feel like because this is antique Italian varnish, it has a much thinner, less varnished look about it, but you can still tell that it's it's varnished, but it's, it's very smart. You've got the nice aged wood on the back there. I'm not sure how much of that is coming out on camera, but you know, it, it looks very, very similar to an antique looking violin, which is the whole point of these because these are replicas at the end of the day. But the whole thing looks, you know, the whole thing looks really nice and it looks really, really well finished. Um, the bridge is nice. The bridge is, the bridge is an Albert, deluxe Albert bridge. It's slightly, interestingly, this, this bridge is slightly angled differently to the other bridges in that, uh, for example, the one I've got in front of me, which is the, the workshop canon, uh, or canon, however you want to pronounce that, the bridge is slightly different between the two. So on the, um, on the bench Plowden, it's not going to come out on camera, but there's slightly more of a hump, <laughs> for lack of a better word, between the D and the G string, or between the between the gap between the G string and the D string. There seems to be slightly more of a definite hump, but not that that makes any difference. I'm just this is just kind of a um, a visual statement that I'm making, but it's probably to do with the the action of the strings, but. The bridge does have a very nice angle, but that's just one thing I noticed with the bridge. There's slightly more of a hump. Actually, now I look at it more between the D and the A strings, but you know, it's still, it just looks a lot higher there. But as I say, that's just more of an observation and a fact rather than um, a positive or a negative view. So yeah, it, it's it's finished really nicely. It comes in, in boxwood. It looks to me that this one only has the option of having boxwood um, features which is the chin rest, the tailpiece and the tuners, uh, the, the peg sorry at the top. Um, I'm not a personal fan of, of boxwood, I've said that in one of the other videos. Um, that has no bearing on the sound or uh, tone or uh, you know anything like that on the violin at all, absolutely not. I just prefer ebony, I just, I don't know why, I just prefer the look of ebony, I'm just not keen on uh, the boxwood colour but you know, it wouldn't put me off buying this violin by any means. I don't really care. You know, this, this violin could be red and polka dot. If it sounded absolutely fantastic, I'd still buy it anyway. But that's just more of a personal preference to me. You know, some people like it, some people don't. But just for me, I just prefer ebony. But, you know, that's, as I say, just my opinion. So, yeah, it looks really nice. Oh, and the other thing is, it just has a one piece, uh, a one piece back. So I know I get a lot of questions on that. It, as I said in other videos, doesn't matter whether you've got a one piece or two piece back. I know a lot of people get a bit hung up on that and you shouldn't do because there's no, no evidence to suggest that a one or a two piece back is better or worse than the other. Who do I think this is for? I think this is for um, a more higher end musician. So. I would probably say, category-wise, someone who is intermediate or above. I mean, if you've got $4,600 and you want to treat yourself to the violin to end all violins, the one that you you die with, the one, you know, you'll never be buying another violin ever again, then this violin's going to be for you. Um, it's a fantastic violin, but it's, you know, it's not going to be, it's, it's not aimed at beginners, nothing to say that a beginner couldn't buy this, obviously. But I definitely think this is aimed at more of the professional musician or semi-professional musician even, but definitely more of a professional musician. Or somebody um, somebody out there watching this video, if you're, you're not necessarily a professional musician, but you've been playing a fair while, um, or you're, you're not a professional violinist, I should say, but you've been playing a fair while, you know, you can knock out a decent tune, you're doing really well, and you just want to treat yourself and an upgrade to a, 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 you know, more of a professional violin, a, a really, really good higher end violin, then this is gonna be the one for you. And you're not gonna be disappointed with this. But I also think as well that you should explore the other variations in this one as well. So this is the Bench, Holstein Bench Plowden. 
but as I said there are some other variations on this that have slightly different um, soundings and tones to them so I would definitely check those out as well to see if the, there isn't maybe another one that, that you might prefer. I think this has um, this has a really nice tone, uh, a really nice sound to it. It's very it's very deep, it's very mellow, it's very rich as you heard from the recording. In fact, all three you'll hear you'll 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 definitely hear that when I compare them back to back. They're all. Um, that kind of similar sound. So they're all very similarly mellow, very rich, very very velvety, very very powerful on the G. This 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 has a lot of power on the G, in a good way. Uh, this has a lot of richness on the G. So actually, I think if you are toying between the violin or viola, a lot of people like the deepness of the viola, but they don't want to actually play the viola. They still want to play the violin. And they ask me, you know, Alison, can you recommend a, you know, a rich, a deep, mellow violin? Then, you know, something like this is going to be what you're looking for. But obviously, because it's in a much higher uh, monetary bracket, you're going to be getting all of the other good stuff around it. Basically, you're not going to be able to fault this this violin technically. So there we go. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed all these video reviews. Don't forget to check out the individual reviews that I've done of the, the other two of these violins, plus the comparison uh, review videos and all the back to backs and everything. All of those will link directly underneath this video, as will links to take you to the Fiddlerman shop in case you might want to have a look at um, these and maybe treat yourself and purchase one. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!